whether it's in PE or whether you play sports. If you play sports like me, if you play basketball, if you play football, whatever it was, you would go into the locker room before the game to get strategy on how to handle the game, and you would get a motivational speech about how to go out and tackle the opponent, to take care of the opponent, and defeat the opponent. But just in case you needed a refresher at halftime, you would come back into the locker room to get further instructions based upon what the opponent was doing. So the coach's job or the coach's job was to assess how the opponent was uh, was handling you and where the opponent may have been gaining access or may have been winning. And then the opponent, the opponent was doing the same thing. They were strategizing about you. But then when you got into the locker room, you would get this information and then after you got that information, you came back out to execute what you just got. Right? Y'all understand? And here is the reality. Even when you have been defeated, there is another opponent that's ha- that's coming next week. So watch this. What God is trying to condition us to do is not celebrate so much in victory and also not be so depressed in defeat. Because you got somebody else that's showing up next week. And if you do not learn how to rebound well from victory and defeat because you can celebrate victory too long. Yeah. Now, okay, y'all. Okay. Ooh, this is 12 o'clock. I know it's going to be a little difficult. You can celebrate too long. You can have a good thing. What, what, what does not allow you to study or what, that, what does not allow you to be prepared for the next opponent is that you celebrated your last victory too long. Because you will celebrate victory, not understanding that there's another opponent that just watched you defeat somebody else and they're trying to study how you defeated them. They're saying, oh, yeah, they, they won because they did this, so now we're going to try to stop them from doing that. So they're studying, they're, they're, they're studying your victory. And if you celebrate victory too long, you're going to be defeated by the next opponent, not because you're not good, but because you did not prepare. Ooh. Here is what the locker room is. We're going to equate it to your life. The locker room literally is your mind. Your mind is the locker room. The mind is the locker room for your actions. How you act a thing out is first of all what you first thought. Because we love to address symptoms without getting to the root. So we love to talk about somebody's locked into smoking weed. They locked into having sex and they locked into drinking. And then you with your immature self will be praying at the altar that they stop symptoms when you don't get to the root. The root is how they think about themselves. And the root is what they thought and what they inherited by somebody else that did not process their thinking properly. And so the wrong thing for you to do is try to deliver somebody from a thing called symptoms. And the problem with the church is that we don't have power to dig to the root. So we love to deal with the symptoms. And just because the symptoms stop for a moment does not mean that we are delivered. You need to understand I need to get to the root of my problem so that it can be uprooted so I don't have to go back to it. The challenge that we have is that is that is that the church, us, we, because we don't want to change how we think, we will stay in what we like. Because we don't change how we think. I'm going to show you in scripture that it's very important that if you want to change anything, the locker room is a place of what? Change. The locker room is a place of what? So if we're going to change anything, it's going to start with the way that you think. It's impossible, hear me, to live out any level of change if you first don't change the way you think. You cannot, hear me, I'm talking to my college students now, you cannot go into a new school year and expect a different outcome if you first don't change the way you think about school. For those of you that are not in school, you graduated, you old now. And you like, I'm a graduate, I'm, I'm good. I'm tired about work. And that's, I'm sick and tired of work. Let me help you. The reason why you're so frustrated at work is because you're doing the same thing over and over again and you are tired of that job. The reality of it is, is that you have not changed the way you see your job. Okay, y'all. You can do the same thing, like, it was just so mundane and it's so beneath me. 
I'm more anointed than what they're paying me. And I'm more worth than what they're paying me. And the reality of it is, all of that may be true, but your frustration is not going to be alleviated until you think differently about your job. Here is the reality. If that job is not your destination, it's your preparation. And God is trying to prepare you for something greater, but you are mad at the preparation. Baby, don't nobody like the gym. It seems to be the same on your job. I'm sick and tired of doing the same thing on my dad. I'm sick and tired of doing it. Because you have not changed what you think. Could it be that they have not changed because you have not? <laughs> In Romans chapter number 12, starting at verse number 1 from the New King James Version, it says this I beseech you, therefore, brother, by mercy of God, that you present your body to live sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. It says, Be not to to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. And if you will change anything, you work out. That what God is trying to get you to do is to renew your mind. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. You're like, oh, renew it. Sounds, it sounds easy. It sounds easy. Just hit the button and then I'm renewing. Oh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Hit the button. <laughs> renew. No. See, you think that renewal needs to go back to the beginning. And in gaming, <laughs> is that you have not learned where to reset. You want to pick up where you have left off. And where you have left off because you did certain things wrong, you still live, you still picking up in wrong. You gotta learn how to start back over. And it does not start back over from infancy. It starts back over from your new birth. And so the Bible says, you, you, you must be born again. When Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, he says, Nicodemus says, wait a minute, I gotta go back into my mama's womb. He said, no. Nah. He said, no, nah, it's a it's a it's a born again. That means that you believe in me. And in Romans it says, if you believe in your mouth, profess your, if you believe in your heart, profess your mouth, the Lord Jesus your personal Lord and Savior, you shall be saved. There is a new birth that we are supposed to operate in. So here's the thing: for those of us that can tell the truth, when you first got saved, you feel amazing. When you first got saved, you're like, oh, I got faith of a mustard seed. I'm about to move some mountains. I'm about to speak to it, and it ain't gonna go. You start listening to rap, you start, uh, ain't no part of me over here. I'm getting saved. I'm gonna, your first be like, you wanna go so sweet? No, I'm saved now. But then all of a sudden, you realize that just because you got saved, you had to make a decision every day to live saved. It was nothing that was gonna come down to make you block, stop it, and do it. You had to make a conscious decision that I ain't going to live this thing. And what he's saying is the renewal of your mind going back to the beginning of your new birth. Yeah. You need to uh, of, 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 of your born againness. You need to understand that when he's saying this, he said, I'm going back to how I was when I was born again. I am getting my courage back. I'm getting my fire back. I'm getting my joy back. This is how we renew our minds. You renew your mind by a conscious decision that how I am currently living is not up to the standard of what God wants me to live in. Now, I want you to understand this. We do our own thinking. God does not think for us. Amen. Yeah. <sighs> Amen. We do our own thinking. God does not do it for us. The Holy Spirit will prompt you in a way, but you still have to make a decision to live that thing out. This is the reason why when something goes wrong, you will feel the urge to apologize. Even if you were wrong in your thoughts. Notice I said in your thoughts. you will be like, hm, I ain't apologize. I was right. But then, for, the, for those of us that are moved by the Holy Spirit, God will convict us. It don't matter if you're right. You'll make it right. Now, I can be mad and I speak to them, but you call yourself sad. Because sometimes making it right is better than being right. Oh, y'all don't want to hear that. Making it right is better than being right. We do our own thing. But you need to understand this. You will never live beyond what you think about yourself. 
Oh, 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 you didn't hear me. You will never live beyond what you think about yourself. So whatever you think about yourself, then that's what you give yourself the clearance to live in. If you do not think more of yourself than where you are, then you're going to live below what you believe. Than what God wants you to believe. Hear me. The thinking process that you must have to live in is that, hear me, I'm conscious of who I am. I'm conscious, I'm aware of who I am, but I don't think highly, more highly of myself, but I know myself. Uh, uh, you would never be able to live beyond what you think about yourself. Hear me when it says this. God is more concerned about changing your mind than he is about changing your situation. God is more concerned about changing your mind than he is about changing your situation. Because it makes no sense to him to change the situation if he did not change your mind. For your mind to get intact, you will have to address your dysfunctional thoughts. And, like legit, what do you believe about you? Because you operate how you operate because of what you believe about yourself. We settle for what we settle for because of what we believe about ourselves. It's what you think about you that makes the world a difference. If you're going to move from how you used to be to who you need to be, it's going to be changing how you think about you. And guess what? It's nobody else's responsibility. 